How far would you go to cheat destiny? A couple of months ago, a friend of mine was about to get married. And as tradition goes in her family, she was taken to the fortune teller. And this person looked at her palm and said, uh, you know what, the lines on your hand, they're not very auspicious for a good marriage to this person. Now, modern day brides are different. Modern day brides take things into their own hands. So even though all her friends suggested crying, running away, giving an ultimatum, taking out the latest feminist text and showing it to her family, she decided to do something else. She took a flight and went to South Korea. And when she came back, she presented a new hand to a different fortune teller. And this new hand had altered palm lines. Suddenly, the wedding was going to be a success. Suddenly, she was free to marry the man she wanted. This is Sonali Acharji, and you are listening to Health Wealth, a podcast that wants to help you better understand, as well as increase your interest in looking after all aspects of your well-being. India is today amongst the top 20 countries in the world for plastic surgeries per capita. This is data which is compiled by the International Society of Aesthetic Plastic Surgery. Amongst certain society circles today, in fact, things like nose job and Botox are as normal to talk about as gluten, yoga, and Elon Musk. And because both disposable income as well as that pressure to look good is increasing, so is the frequency, the medical techniques, and the types of cosmetic or plastic surgery that are being practiced today. So I met a surgeon recently who had a very unusual request from a client and I felt like sharing it. He had a client come in who said, can you change how much my eyebrows lift? I don't want my eyebrows to go up too much. And he asked the client, why, why, what, what's bothering you about your eyebrows? And he said, because when I go to London to play poker in a casino, um, people have started telling me that my tell, or rather the, the fact that I'm lying, is the fact that my eyebrows go up a bit. So if you can stop it, I'll make more money at the casino. There is another surgeon who told me a story of a very successful corporate woman who came in and said, look, I spent hours wearing high heels and they are hurting my feet. So can you put something into my heels to add cushion so that my heels won't hurt me so much? And that was actually done. And this woman can now go almost 10 to 12 hours in high heels without feeling pain. Plastic surgery is no longer just for beautification. It seems to be entering the domain for functionalism. It seems to be affordable. It seems to be something we can all do if it helps improve our lives and the quality of our lives. But how far can you take it all? How much surgery is too much surgery? Is that for a patient to decide or for a doctor to tell you? Last year, in 2023, there were about three to four different deaths of South American social media influencers that resulted due to complications in cosmetic surgery. The year before that, in 2022, um, there was a Kannada actor, Chaitana Raj, who also passed away in Bangalore after complications came up post a cosmetic surgery. So while there is serious demand, there is also unawareness. And as we go forward and as these technologies become more affordable, more advanced, it's really important to learn a lot more about them. So I have with me today Dr. Amit Gupta, who is the founder of Divine Aesthetics and a plastic surgeon himself. And he's agreed to spill the beans on how the demands of 2024 is reshaping the art and ethics of cosmetic surgery. Hello. Thank you so much for having me over. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. You know, last night I was thinking um, the very idea of reshaping and sculpting someone's face and body is so daunting. 
how do you do it what is plastic surgery and how did why did you decide to get into it the thought is actually beautiful for us because we can actually enhance the happiness and the joy of someone plastic surgery contrary to what people believe has actually nothing to do with plastic it's come from the word to mold to create to enhance to sculpt i in fact was not even a plastic surgeon i was a cardiac surgeon i dropped cardiac surgery right. midway and went into plastic surgery for the sole reason that there's so much creativity involved there's so much of thought process there's so much of happiness and joy in this field every patient is different every patient has a lot of emotional needs and uh, we are able to really f- shape their future in a way uh to add to the point in terms of the demand uh, in india particularly i'm 100% sure in the within the next decade india could be amongst the top 5 in terms of volumes of plastic surgery in the world and uh, that is one of the biggest reasons for that is the enhanced skill that uh, indian plastic surgeons are bringing on now do you need to be artistic to be a plastic surgeon so plastic surgery is actually said to be a marriage of science with art so it's not only great surgical skills but it is also the ability to foresee what is going to happen mm. after the surgery yeah. so it's literally like creating a painting because someone has to start on a blank canvas and yeah. foresee what it's going to look like only then you can bring out the best colors in it yeah so it is art with science so i remember a lot of sculptors say this you know yes. when you see a, a block of marble absolutely you should be able to see the final I, product it is it is it is because uh, so if we are reshaping a breast for example there's a lady who's got so we've had patients who've had breasts falling down literally to the thighs mm-hmm. now imagine that lady having to live all her life going through college going mm-hmm. through jobs now we have to bring it to normal mm-hmm. so i have to foresee what she wants mm-hmm. and what type of clothing she's going to wear mm-hmm. what is her need mm-hmm. and to create that starting from where mm-hmm. she is 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 it's it's not it's not daunting it's beautiful and it's really artistic for sure you know one of the reasons i wanted to do this episode is that every time um you go through any Bollywood news channel or Hollywood news channel it's full of news about oh this actor had a plastic yeah. surgery True. or this one getting trolled for a cosmetic surgery why are we suddenly so keen on these procedures i can think of two names who have openly come out in public embracing mm-hmm. plastic surgery one is shruti hasan mm-hmm. she has publicly said that she's got a nose surgery and very recently megan fox who yeah. uh, claimed that she had got breast implant surgery so and there's ample conjecture happening mm-hmm. about almost every star in starlet who's had something yeah. or the other done the important thing is it's not just the stars it is normal people today see the interest in the public will arise when they are themselves interested in doing something mm-hmm. like this now a very large volume of the normal indian population and it's not just the high income groups it is the middle and the upper middle income groups which are now going towards this I think the biggest reason for that is social media the influence of the positive influence of social media in a way and the attached safety to it and the fact that in India at least we can promise results as good as you can get in Colombia or US yeah no in fact i was in lucknow recently and i was amazed by the number of uh, cosmetic surgery clinics you can actually drive down certain roads and see yeah, them yeah true uh, yeah that that that's true i think but you know there's a warning to that as well and one of the points that you brought on in the beginning mm-hmm. is the fatalities or the problems that come along mm-hmm. the mushrooming of centers does not mean the person sitting in the center is qualified mm-hmm. so it makes so yes there are problems we've had uh, deaths in hair transplant we've had deaths in other situations but when we get down to the root of it it turns out that the person performing the procedure was not even qualified to do the procedure so what is the qualification qualification the person has to be a plastic surgeon a plastic mm-hmm. surgeon so it took me 12 years of studies to become a plastic surgeon after that it took me another 2 years to excel in the aesthetic field of plastic surgery mm-hmm. which is my forte today mm-hmm. so 14 years is an average time required to learn the basics mm-hmm. i have been in the field for 18 years and even today we say we are still learning mm-hmm. every day a large a very huge problem in india is 
almost every Tom, Dick and Harry wants to do aesthetic surgery. Mm -hmm. So today we've got clinics. I mean, you're in Lucknow. Just take a walk down GK1. Mm -hmm. Just go ahead of M Block Market. Yeah. 19 to 20 clinics. Now, if a check is done, so many of them are not even registered. Mm -hmm. So for example, a liposuction should be done by a plastic surgeon. There are few skin specialists in India who are doing it. Their general surgeons are doing it. Mm -hmm. In fact, the name that you mentioned, the lady who expired was operated by a general surgeon. So that is a major problem and it becomes the responsibility of the patient to check the credentials. Yeah. Of or you could person. check the age. If it takes 18 years, they should be around 40. Oh, well, so we've got we've got some people who are 60 who've been okay. uh, working, doing plastic surgery, even though they're not supposed to. Okay, so only qualifications. So I, th work. I think the first thing is yeah. the qualifications because you can you can check them online now. Mm -hmm. It's so easy, and in fact, we encourage our patients to ask for qualifications from the reception, and if in doubt, discuss it with the doctor directly. Yeah. That is the first step. That's mm -hmm. not the last step because then it comes on to how much, say, for example, a patient wants to do a hair transplant. Mm -hmm. Has the doctor done a reasonable number of surgeries mm -hmm. or they just offer it as a service? So if I am a patient, I would want to go with a doctor who has done two to three thousand surgeries at least. Why would I want to go to someone who's just learning it? Mm -hmm. So I think experience, degrees and then online reviews yeah. that become very essential. Yeah. So when you do uh, any kind of cosmetic procedure, there are obviously certain materials and certain yeah. technologies that come into play. Are there some which are really exciting right now? Are you talking of something new? Yeah, something new. So something. There, there is, there is. So for example, in hair fall treatments, mm -hmm. there's, there's something very, uh, there's something exciting happening in terms of treatments to reduce. So we cannot eliminate hair fall. So there are stuff happening which might potentially reduce hair fall to an extent that hair transplant may not be needed in the future. That's something interesting. So yeah. it's extremely experimental. Yeah. They've been talking of cloning for years. It's not mm -hmm. worked too well. But uh, there have been a lot of uh, studies on stem cells. Mm -hmm. And they have been really promising. But it mm -hmm. could take a decade, even right. more. Right. Then there's something really exciting happening in the field of breast implant surgery. Mm -hmm. So silicon implants have been controversial. But... Unfortunately, more negativity attached to them than real. They have been, they're extremely safe. The fifth generation we are using gives lifetime warranties, in fact. There's a company which is trying to work on an implant which is absorbable. So an implant goes into the body. The body creates a reaction around the implant, creates more breast tissue, and in a few months, the implant just disappears from the body. Huh. So that is really exciting. Yeah. That, that's something yeah. we're really looking forward to. And forever, there are there's huge work being done on anti-aging, one of the most, one of the recent things which has come up is are, uh, there are threads mm -hmm. which help in anti-aging the face. And previously, they would last for about five months. Nowadays, they're lasting for more than two years. So, you know, today we can literally promise a patient that you're going to look five years younger and you're going to look five years younger for the next 10 years. So, freezing the age yeah. uh, in, a, in a way. Yeah. And it's 2024. Um, again, we have been talking so much about nose jobs and Botox and breast jobs. And these are getting quite common. Yes, it is. I mean, I never thought I would say this, it but is. boob jobs are very commonplace today. I know of three, four people yeah. myself who've yeah. got it done. Absolutely. And there's no judgment. No. There's uh, no real worry about costs either. Not really. Are there some treatments like this? Palm chain altering your palm lines was very new to me. Are there some such unusual procedures that you've had so to do? This, uh, so, so these are things which are not done by 99% of plastic mm -hmm. surgeons. Mm -hmm. So these would be done by one odd exceptional person. Mm -hmm. Now therein lies the problem of safety. Mm -hmm. For example, there are clinics which are coloring the eye permanently. Mm -hmm. It's not plastic surgery, mm -hmm. uh, falls within uh, other domains. Mm -hmm. Has led to blindness in so many people. So I would recommend that Anybody wanting to do something so risky should really balance the, you know, right. the benefit of the treatment versus the risks involved. Right. Uh, we would normally most established plastic surgeons will go with treatments which are, uh, you know, endorsed by the associations, which mm -hmm. are agreed to by most plastic surgeons globally. Mm -hmm. Something like this, the risky things. Well, I I don't think most of the experienced doctors would want to do. Yeah. So. Supposing I come to you with a reference of someone's lips, like 
Khloe yeah. Kardashian, for example. Yeah. If I give you the exact kind of lips I want, is the science today precise enough to fulfill that? Not really. We can we can get so there are about twelve or thirteen different shapes mm-hmm. of lips in general. Mm-hmm. The reason why we can't match someone else is because your lip shape may not be conducive to that. Your face may not like the look of what the Kardashians have. Right. So. as an intelligent doctor one would recommend that let's go with something different mm-hmm. but if the patient insists mm-hmm. then we would bring them close to what is shown to us mm-hmm. but to say that can we do a cut copy paste impossible yeah. so you can't clone impossible. faces impossible it's not possible so how do you then uh, sort of walk your clients through the possibilities yeah. of plastic surgery yeah. because i would imagine a lot of people coming with referrals um possibly true. celebrity referrals true, true. so uh, that's 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 one of the most beautiful questions and i really wait for a question like this because this is where we are able to bring out the fact that plastic surgery deals with emotions a lot of emotions so when someone comes to us the first thing we want to assess is is the need justifiable mm mm-hmm. is the person well within their own control mm-hmm. do they know what they want mm-hmm. we've had people who have expected something which is not even thinkable so you know then red flags start coming mm-hmm. up and we ask the person to leave immediately mm-hmm. there are people who have been uh, disturbed psychologically and want think that this surgery is going to correct things for them so we got to identify such people and we ask them to leave they they're not candidates mm-hmm. then second is if the expectation and deliverability mm-hmm. match what the patient expects and what i can deliver so i so if there's a mismatch then we really need to plan whether we want to do the procedure or not mm-hmm. why because that person will never be happy in the rest of his life is always going to be a problem for us mm-hmm. so first these red flags are taken care of and then we walk them through i personally walk them through the complications first mm-hmm. because even though we know today plastic surgery is absolutely safe mm-hmm. maybe only one in 1000 persons will even have a slight complication today mm-hmm. but that does exist so every patient needs to know the problems and if they are comfortable with the problems then we get on to the rest of it yeah. so we pass that hurdle first and then we take them through different other patients who have got got similar problems what solutions they've got mm-hmm. and one of the things that i love doing is that uh, i show them the emotions of a patient who's already had it done so today one very important thing you just said was people are not judging other people mm-hmm. today so we've had young people who have had breast implants done who have got breast reductions done and mm-hmm. coming out on camera and telling their experience 5 years back this was not thinkable yeah when a person said a young girl 21 year old wants to do a boob job mm-hmm. she hears the experience of another 21 year old girl who had the same problems mm-hmm. same fights in her mind mm-hmm. gives her so much more confidence Right. So we take them through this journey of other people, then take them through. Today we have softwares available mm-hmm. where we can kind of try to show what they're going to look like after surgery as well. Mm-hmm. So we take them through that, and then uh, today there's another important thing which is happening is there are startup companies giving zero percent uh, financing for surgeries as well. So that helps a lot of people do surgeries. Mm-hmm. So then that part is taken care of and then we focus a lot on follow up treatments, follow ups. Yeah. So there's a f- uh, strict protocol that mm-hmm. is created. This whole journey can take at 2 hours for a patient mm-hmm. and then the patient can even take up to 3 to 6 months to decide. Right. That's something very interesting there. And only then does the patient uh, uh, yeah. come for surgery. So you mentioned um a 21 year old. Now typically I mean it's not new for young people to get plastic surgeries it's just that it's happening a lot more. Yeah, true. Um typically plastic surgeries was something that was seen as anti-aging botox was huge or if you had some significant imperfection in your body. Um but today you know I, I myself just did some research on plastic surgery patients. and i came across 18 year olds 19 year olds um who even if they haven't done the surgery they're posting the desire to true, do it true. and if i see their face i don't see anything wrong with it true. so why is it suddenly we are so self critical 
we uh, we are more self aware so i will so most doctors will never inject a person with botox or fillers i mean i would never do that before 25 to 30 years mm-hmm. of age that's kind of a limit that i've drawn for myself but there are some conditions which need treatment and one of the conditions is a uh, male breast enlargement called gynecomastia we've operated 15 year old kids or teenagers and the reason for that is a 15 year old boy with breasts which look like a girl's breasts mm-hmm. is teased to such an extent in yeah. school yeah. that that person get becomes an introvert mm-hmm. cannot perform well academically does not take part in sports S- uh, water sports is out for them mm-hmm. they have to wear loose shirts all the time the sad part is a bright kid becomes an introvert just because of this problem and every month we are operating at least five or six of such ch- uh, children before the age of 18 and this is in your clinic in delhi this is in the hospital that in, in uh, hospital that the art plastic surgery hospital yeah. itself and the interesting thing is it is the parents who are bringing their kids because they're seeing a personality change mm. and more and more parents are today understanding that surgery is being safer mm-hmm. they are earlier this is 10 years back no parent would come in fact male breast enlargement we would do not less than 25 years of some 25 mm-hmm. 27 today 15 16 17 is also happening mm-hmm. 21 22 is happening mm-hmm. breast implants the youngest girl we've done is 21 years old okay earlier it was about 28 29 years old mm-hmm. and the reason for that is self awareness the need to look better mm-hmm. the need to fit better in society yeah how you know we we might be critical of this but then look at the girl she is not able to wear the clothes of her choice she is not able to go with the friends of her choice mm-hmm. she is not fitting well in the society yeah. she is not doing well academically or professionally mm-hmm. we are losing that child out we are, we are killing the potential of that child mm-hmm. a small procedure done so breast implant takes about 20 minutes mm-hmm. to do and suddenly the world changes for that girl right we've had we've had women who have saved marriages because of these surgeries we have had guys getting married because of procedures we've got people getting promotions not because the boss gets mm-hmm. them promoted it's because the person creates something around them yeah that confidence. makes them the confidence mm-hmm. makes a huge difference it is it, it is tell me um you you mentioned that these surgeries are slightly safer today yes how are they safer what what is it that makes them safer uh so we'll start from the plastic surgeon mm-hmm. itself the skill mm-hmm. of the plastic surgeon right. indian plastic surgeons are today some of the best in the world mm-hmm. second is anesthesia mm-hmm. uh today if you do a surgery of say a 1 hour duration the patient is up in about 3 to 4 minutes 3 to 4 hours later they are walking in the room and f- most patients are back home mm-hmm. uh so i've had a breast implant patient going to movie after 5 hours so that was unheard of previously yeah. Yeah. the technology the machines that we are using are just so amazing today all the medicines the drugs are now so much safer the side effect profile has come down a lot and we are now moving towards the concept of day care surgeries where we want the patient to be up and about the soonest yeah. so we reduce the hospital admission time so what the patient gets is that i'm going to be i'm going i mm-hmm. i'm coming back in just a few hours so that creates a lot of uh, improvement for them So safety is basically experience with technology. So you do need to check on uh, the anesthesia specialist yes. in the hospital as well. Absolutely. I I I can't pronounce what they're A- actually the called. The anesthetist. Yes. The anesthetist absolutely. So yeah. uh, I would say the patient need not check because the surgeon mm-hmm. if the patient trusts the surgeon because the surgeon will only go with someone who's experienced. Okay. Uh most surgeons want to stick with one or two uh, anesthesiologists. Mm-hmm. or anesthetists mm-hmm. because their comfort matches with them a good surgeon will not compromise on the quality of the anesthetist and there's some things that do complicate anesthesia right yes. like thyroid or Absolutely. Um, if you're too fat so the biggest problems mm-hmm. for us is thyroid mm-hmm. uh most people unfortunately don't know this a person whose thyroid production is less mm-hmm. can have a very severe problem post anesthesia mm-hmm. uh delayed reversal of anesthesia patients going into icus and why just because a thyroid profile was not done so that is for us at least it's mandatory that is yeah. a big problem mm-hmm. then bleeding profiles we've had people who've had bleeding disorders mm-hmm. and the patients have hidden clot it. yeah they can't clot yeah, so yeah. it's it's a huge problem for yeah, us yeah. blood pressure so uncontrolled blood pressure mm-hmm. uncontrolled diabetics they cause problems and maybe not from the anesthetist point of view but at least for us from the surgeon's point of view 
anybody who's had a cardiac intervention mm-hmm. say something like a stent mm. is an absolute no for plastic surgery oh really absolutely why is that uh, they have to stop blood thinners oh they are lifelong on blood thinners yeah, so the yeah. moment they stop blood thinners the stents can get blocked so they if at why all why do you have to stop blood thinners uh, if you do a surgery the uh, where it'll as, just keep on as flowing as long as we make the cut the it'll blood won't flow. stop right right so there is see plastic surgery is never an emergency yeah i mean doing a hair transplant is never an emergency so we consciously in fact our medical forms have a strict contraindication mm-hmm. that please do not if you have a stent in place do not call us mm-hmm. we will not be operating you but is this the same for things like botox or hair transplant Ex- not so only much. perhaps botox is can the only done. thing which can be done for mm-hmm. almost anyone right there's no restriction on that because that doesn't bleed mm-hmm. even fillers can be a problem in patients taking blood thinners uh they can have massive bruising all over the face right uh, someone gets a lip job done and then yeah. they're just swollen up for the next 10 days so we are very careful with uh, people who have medical problems yeah and what if you say no to someone what if someone is desperate willing to pay the bill and you know wants the best of plastic surgeons how do they respond to your denial so someone who wants the best and knows what he or she wants is a good candidate mm-hmm. someone who's desperate is a bad candidate okay so and uh, if the two are combined uh, that's a that's a that's red a flag. difficult one uh, that's difficult i think it depends on the capacity of the surgeon how mm-hmm. much he's got how much of tolerance the surgeon has because a person who's mildly desperate mm-hmm. and wants the surgery has the means will be a bad post operative patient okay so the pers- the surgeon has to have a lot of bandwidth mm-hmm. to ex- to take on the patient in the post operative because these patients do create problems uh, in fact there is an acronym called s i m o n simon mm-hmm. it refers to single men who are impulsive who are obsessed and who are depressed and it's generally said that if you identify a simon please ask that person to leave and how do you do this identity? it's by interaction so Just interaction. you know a plastic surgery consult is not like okay what's wrong okay i'll give this medicine mm-hmm. my consult can last for 2 hours 3 hours because we you know 30 to 45 minutes is spent on understanding the person i'll give you another example a person a lady just wanting a breast implant it's very easy to do the measurement and just mm-hmm. you know just do the maths and put the implant my questioning goes into what is your profession mm-hmm. a person who says i'm a dancer a aerobics instructor a model needs bigger implants a person who says i'm in i'm a housewife in a nuclear in a joint family mm-hmm. needs smaller implants the mother in law does not want to know mm-hmm. so we get into the depth of what why how mm-hmm. make the person come out with all the information that they can and at any point there's a red flag we say no mm-hmm. but by going deep into their mm-hmm. thing w- two things happen when mm-hmm. the patient gets very confident that the doctor is a friend so we create a beautiful relationship at that time mm-hmm. and the doctor gets the confidence that he's dealing with a safe patient yeah in today's medical legal age mm. it gets it can get really nasty yeah. at times does that ever happen like you've done a procedure and they aren't happy with it and that's not a, that's not uncommon okay. we've had uh, see what happens is plastic surgery is so much about emotions mm. and people are not great at expressing emotions many times we don't even know what they want they're telling us something but inside they want something else so they hi- many times we've had problems that we've done something and they said no we never wanted this but the fact is that everything is on paper signed yeah. so we are safe but the yeah. but, you know we feel sad mm-hmm. that we've done all the effort and still the person is not happy yeah. so we do at least most i i i think globally most good plastic surgeons will you know go more than they should mm-hmm. to make sure that the person is happy as long as that is achievable yeah D- do they sometimes think you're like god 9 9 out of 10 times really 9 out of 10 uh i'll tell you something this that's is that's a lot of power to give you yeah but you know we know we know we are not <laughs> i'll tell you this this is this is pretty emotional in a way there was this yeah. young girl who so there's a surgery called hymen repair mm-hmm. not a surgery that i like mm-hmm. it's basically a virginity yes. restoration surgery yeah this young girl we done this surgery and then she says doc can i hug you and i said sure i mean it was a very unusual request mm. 
and she started crying. I said, "What happened? Just sit down, give a glass of water." I said, "What's wrong?" And she said, "Today, years of guilt has been washed away." And I said, "There's no guilt. I mean, it's normal." And she said, "No, I was exploited when I was six by my dad's brother." and i've been carrying that weight on me the shame and today it's over hmm. so now i can move on with my life yeah. imagine 15 17 years of getting stuck hmm. and now able to move ahead yeah actually when we hear of uh, hymen reconstruction uh, very often we are very judgmental of it sadly that you know we're promoting um uh, patriarchy true, or true. purity amongst women and the, oppression the sad part it is the guys who are responsible for this hmm. so i Uh, on my live shows when i when i get live on my digital media mm. i get a lot of hate comments when i talk of hymen repairs mm. the guys say that you're cheating the, the potential men. husband yes. and i say you are the ones who are asking for it how many guys have not mm. had had previous relationships and you want a girl who's a virgin who's a virgin yeah i mean it's you are creating stupidity in this the society for it yeah and there's no way to test a guy's virginity yeah yeah but then when you hear It's a story you just said. You do realize that there might be cases where there yeah, is an actual is. need for it is, um, to reduce shame. Absolutely. And then that's so. It is a very emotional process. For it you. is. It is. We've we've had. Uh, I had a. Uh, so we have these. Especially, we get a lot of these with breast reductions. Young girls, twenty-three, twenty-four year old girl. Now, she's teased at office. She's teased everywhere. Guys tease her because she's got big breasts. She's wearing loose clothes all the time. Mm-hmm. Which girl does not want to look good? Does not want to wear good clothes? She can't. Or be accepted. Or be accepted. Mm-hmm. Marriage becomes a problem. Relationships become a problem. And you know, very interesting. Uh, girls undergoing breast implants, they will always come and tell you it was the girls who were teasing them more mm-hmm. than the guys. That's. So it's so much of psychology at work. Mm-hmm. This surgery is a reconstructive surgery in a way. We are mm-hmm. restoring that person's life. Mm-hmm. And there is also, um, you know, when very often when you are surrounded by a lot of noise, a lot of persecution, you tend to lose that connection with yourself. Um, you give up. You give up. You yes. give up because you don't know who to talk to. And then, if you can actually find a plastic surgeon who's mindful, who's not, yeah, who's going to yeah. give you the most realistic um, answer to things, then that is a good way to go ahead. I think today most plastic surgeons are very empathetic. Mm. We are not sympathetic. Mm. We're very empathetic to the needs, mm. because why would a normal person come to me? Mm. They are stuck somewhere. Mm. And they're and the ones who can't handle it, yeah. and we need to get them out of it. Mm. So I think the first thing that any plastic surgeon really needs to do is build a beautiful relationship with the patient. Mm. The patient needs to know that I, this guy, will hold my hand and take me out of where I am. Yeah, yeah. Can people get addicted to plastic yes. surgery? Yes, sadly, yes. Um, there have been patients, and we have a limit to the number of procedures that we okay. do on any person. most doctors would do that the same a person coming back second or third time mm. for something which is the same thing we never treat them why addiction doesn't stop and with addiction things mm. get worse we've heard of actresses getting mm. multiple nose jobs and then just mm. ruining their career mm-hmm. the more you operate on a person the more the chances of complications anesthesia complications recovery issues and we've seen a person who gets operated two or three times the relationship between the doctor and the patient actually starts breaking because the patient starts expecting too much mm-hmm. it's not possible so we warn every patient who comes to us f- about addiction mm-hmm. tell them we are not going to see you again for the same thing mm-hmm. if you come back for other procedures unless they are justified you will not be operated or oh, even that can happen right like so, first uh, lip job then no something shop. else something yeah. else yeah. so as long as we feel that this is okay mm. this is justified fine otherwise we don't say for example uh, a a guy coming for a male breast reduction and he looks normal mm. when i would never operate that guy yeah because sometimes we can also imagine flaws where there are there none aren't. there aren't A girl with beautiful lips wants a lip job. I mean, I can't make it better than it is. Do you say that? I tell them. I tell them that. See, there's a limit to what I can do. Yeah. I've told women. I've told some women. I've told some guys. Yeah. As well, you are already so beautiful. 
if i touch you i'm going to reduce the percentage of beauty on your face a, so please don't do it and please don't go to someone else yeah you don't want to be ruined and and what do they say when you say that do they buy uh, most it? of them are not very happy about it i mean they're happy that they're getting <laughs> they're a compliment they're complimented yeah but the fact is uh, they I I really don't know to be honest I've not I, I've been on the patient side as mm. well I've done botox on my face okay so I've been on that side as well but if someone says yeah. it's like I say no to a patient but yeah. I justify it to them okay. so I think they really understand that and as a patient were you happy Oh awesome so uh, to an extent that you know I was procrastinating it for yes. at least about 4 5 years mm-hmm. so I had a friend who came in, who, who's a skin specialist who was in my hospital and I was talking to her and she said okay just sit hmm. and 2 minutes later she just shot botox on my jaws I wanted to thin my face Lovely. and she said you never going to get it unless I do it this way and I said okay well do it and my pictures just changed yeah. th- uh, and Six months. The Botox lasts for six months. Okay. So six months later, my daughter, that time she was in, she's sixteen now. She would mm. be about eleven or twelve. Mm. She said, "Pops, time for Botox. Your face has become more fat again." <laughs> <laughs> oh, lovely. So for somebody who might not understand what is Botox, we've been throwing that word around sure. a bit. Could you maybe just briefly outline it? So Botox is an injection. The mm. prime purpose of that injection is to weaken the muscles. Mm. Now the sequelae of that is that anything which is consequent to that muscle activity gets reduced so for example wrinkles on my forehead occur because of muscle contractions here okay. so if i weaken the muscle contraction here my wrinkles will disappear mm-hmm. wrinkles around the corner of the eyes are mm-hmm. because of movement of this muscle mm-hmm. as we talk as we smile mm-hmm. restriction of these movements will eradicate these and the aging is basically on the face because of wrinkles yeah. so the person starts to appear younger mm-hmm. other important uses of botox are for migraine mm-hmm. a resistant migraines can be treated with botox for pe- there are some people who have extremely sweaty palms they are always sweating from the palms mm-hmm. and soles mm-hmm. botox stops so yes. excess sweating okay. in fact summers are coming up mm-hmm. great news for women is that you can do botox in the underarms mm-hmm. and you will not sweat mm-hmm. so you don't get that staining on some clothes mm-hmm. uh other uses are to thin the face mm-hmm. to create smile changes mm-hmm. so botox is it's i think it's a magical inj- a drug mm-hmm. the effect lasts for about 6 months and it's safe 100% no anesthesia <sighs> nothing 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 100% safe okay all right the, can it go wrong sometimes yes it can So uh, very rarely someone might have a brow drop that can happen it's a temporary it lasts for about 3 months okay, at most awesome. so botox doesn't have any permanent effects mm-hmm, at all mm-hmm. no i think um it's been very very interesting to discover this world of ethical plastic surgery yes, yes. the emotional side of True. cosmetic surgeries and thank you for sharing everything That's you have it's amazing amazing to be interacting thank with you thank you i think we shouldn't overlook the pressure for perfection today in an ideal world there would be no bullies we would all seamlessly fit in but in a world where that pressure does exist and that stress does exist is it not all right to find a solution on your own i recently met a young woman she is about 38 married to a very high end businessman and she is the beautiful young trophy wife for her botox and cosmetic surgery anti aging is her ticket to her marriage because she said it very clearly to me off the record of course but she said that if i stop looking good that's the only contribution i'm bringing to this relationship and i know it will fizzle out i don't know where i will go it's a very very sad emotionally depressing story for me to have heard but she accepted that reality of her life she chose that reality for herself and she wore it with a lot of dignity and a lot of confidence and acceptance so i think if you get the full gamut of what cosmetic surgeries are about what they can do what the the harm that they can cause um and you go to the right surgeon then perhaps we should stop looking at them as something negative what are your views on cosmetic procedures and given the growing technology and the dropping prices today 
if tomorrow a 15 year old can get lips like Katrina Kaif would that be empowering her or destroying her life do let us know your thoughts we are available on pods at indiatoday.com you can also message us on 8588966996 we are also available on facebook x whatsapp channels and instagram